Are you looking for a gift idea to sew for that book lover in your life? Well, how about a stylish and practical book sleeve? What it is, is a sleeve that you pop your book into so it doesn't get damaged in your bag. And I think they'll absolutely love it. Use their favorite fabric to make one. Let me show you how. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make your book sleeve with just one plain piece of fabric, but you can also make the cover however you'd like to. You can see with this one, I just sewed strips together and then I quilted that onto a piece of batting. And for this one, I just sewed squares together and then sewed that onto batting. So I didn't worry about the fusible fleece. I just sewed it straight onto batting. And isn't that cute? You could use a quilt block that you've got lying around. And if it's too small, you could just add on a little bit to the sides or the top, whatever you need. But I'll just show you how to make it with a plain piece of fabric. But remember, you can make these however you'd like. Also, the snap is optional. It does take up a little space within our sleeve meaning we can only put in a book that's sort of going to come this high. So it is optional. You could also use a button and a piece of elastic to come over, just like we did with my mug cozy. I'll put a link down below if you'd like to check out that video and see how you could finish it off that way. You'll need two pieces of fabric for the outer of your book sleeve and then two pieces for the lining. Now all four pieces measure 8 inches by 11 inches. And then you'll need some fusible fleece and I'll put a link down below if you're not sure what that is. Now I've cut four pieces and they measure seven and a half inches by ten and a half inches. They're actually just half an inch smaller than our fabric. You'll also need a snap set. With the snap set you get the pliers and all and you'll need one set of snaps. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to place my fabric so the wrong side is facing me and the right side is facing down. Then I'm going to take a piece of my fusible fleece and I'm going to find the side that's got the bumpy raised bits and that's the glue. So we, what we want to do is we want to face that down onto our fabric and then we want to press. And what it, this does is it melts the glue attaching it to our fabric. So I'm just going to turn that over and press on the side as well. It's easier to work with if you've really made sure that it is attached to your fabric. And then what I'll do is repeat that for the other three pieces. I am just making sure I don't have any little bits of fabric or thread in there because it just will be lumpy. And then when I'm placing the fleece down, I am just making sure that it's sitting in the middle. So we've got about the same amount of space on all four sides. So now we're going to take our outer fabric and face the two pieces right sides together. And if you've got directional fabric, you might just want to check that right now. For example, if mine was directional, I'd want them both facing in the same direction. So just placing them right sides together, lining up all four edges, and then I will put some pins in to keep it in place. And I like to start with the corners. Now what we're going to do is sew around three sides, leaving one of the shorter sides open. And again, if you've got directional fabric, you'd want to leave the top open. So I'll just set this aside and then we're going to do exactly the same with our lining fabric, except we're going to do a mark for the opening. So first of all, I'll just line up all four edges and pop some pins in. So now if you've got directional fabric, we're going to leave one side open like we are with the outer fabric, but we also need an opening at the bottom so we can turn it right sides out. If you've got directional fabric, you might want that to be at the top, but it is going to be the lining, so we're not really going to see it. So I'm just going to mark down the bottom here about a three inch opening so that when I'm sewing, I'm going to come down this side to this mark, stop, and then I'm going to start again here and go all the way up. So I'm going to stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance and I've got my special quarter inch foot that has a guide there so I know it's perfect. Use whatever you need to use to get that quarter inch seam allowance. I'm going to stitch at stitch length two and I'm just using glide thread which is what I like to use for regular sewing projects. 
so just putting my foot down I'm going to start at the very edge I'll do a back stitch and then come forward and then as the pins get in my way I'll just remove them down and doing my best guess at being about a quarter of an inch away from the edge lifting up my foot with the needle down and turning and then carrying off and when I get up to this top edge I will just do a back stitch again cutting my thread and now I'm going to do exactly the same with the second piece except where I've got my markings I'm going to stop there I'll do a back stitch and then I'll carry on here now just on the bottom corners where we sewed and turned I'm just going to trim the excess off I'm going to cut close to the stitches but not too close that I ruin the integrity of the corner and of course be careful not to cut those stitches. Repeat that for the second piece or the outer fabric. So then what we're going to do is take our lining and we're going to turn it right sides out so I'm just going to open it up, grab the bottom, we do have a hole there so just grab the bottom and pull it through and it doesn't have to be perfect and then what we're going to do is take our outer piece and open it up and we're going to pop our lining in so then we've got both of our good sides of the fabric facing each other we're going to pop that right in and we want the seams on the sides here so this, you can see these seams are here and the seams for the lining are also there as well because what we need to do next is line them up so I'm just making sure that's right in there. It's easier for the lining to be really inside than not. And then coming up to these seams, we're going to nest them. Now, well, I'm going to nest mine because I'm a quilter. So all that means is one set of seams is folded over and going that way. One set of seams is folded over and going this way. And then I'm going to butt them up next to each other. okay this is a bit fiddly and then we, when we open it up we want to get a nice straight line we also want these edges to be lined up nicely too and then I'll pop a clip in then I'm going to come over to the other side and do exactly the same on this side now if you are a dressmaker you'd like to open your seams and marry them up and that's perfectly fine too it just depends on whether you've got a quilting background or a dressmaking background both are correct well correct in my opinion so lining them up again popping a clip in and then what I'm going to do is just come to the middle here and I can see my lining is really popping out I want to push it in and line up both the edges and clip it in the middle and then I'll just pop a couple more in and then I'll do the same on this side you can see it's popping out again so I just want to push that right in oh it is a little bit fiddly we do want to get that right and then clip clip and clip okay now we're going to sew around that edge now if your sewing machine has a free arm now's the time to use it so a free arm is a piece that you can pull off here so you've got a smaller cylinder and then you could pop this right on and sew it really easily now I don't have that so what I'm going to do is actually sew it this way I'm going to have the bulk up here so I can tell that I'm not accidentally sewing it underneath for example I'm not going to sew it like this and not be able to see underneath so I'm going to open it right up like this start on my seam put my foot down 
remove that clip and then I'm just going to stitch I'm still stitching with a quarter inch seam allowance and on stitch length two and I'm just going to take my time there's no rush and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew and then I'm just going to readjust as long as it's nice and flat and straight these sort of two to three inches in front of me all will be well and of course take your time stopping and readjusting of course if you've got that free arm use that for this part and now we're coming right up to where I began I'm going to just stitch right over the top of those original stitches and then do a back stitch cut my thread so now what we're going to do is I'm just going to pull that lining out find my opening put my fingers in and come all the way through and grab the very end here pinch it with my fingers and now gently pull it all the way through and then with my point turner I'm just going to make sure that my outer is sitting really nicely we're not going to see the lining but we will see the outer so just pushing that through with my point turner or use something similar and you can be firm but gentle at the same time because if you're too rough you could accidentally go through your fabric I've done it before so just get it so you're happy with how it's sitting okay now I've lost my point turner in there there we go so now what I'm going to do is just close up this lining I'm just finding my opening and I'm going to fold in both sides at about quarter of an inch because that was our seam allowance and I want to fold it in so it looks like it was never there and then we're going to sew it shut now we probably should be pressing this but no one's going to see it so just this once I'm going to skip that step I'm just going to pin it in place and then we're just going to sew it closed starting just before the opening I'm actually going to stitch at about a 1 8 of an inch seam allowance I've still got my quarter inch foot on I'm just going to do it by eye so I'll just do a few stitches and then do a back stitch and then I'm going to come right past that opening and once I know I'm right past it I'll do a back stitch and cut my thread so now what we're going to do is open it up the best we can and we're going to push that lining inside and again this bit is a little bit fiddly so just take your time so it's sitting really nicely and then at the top here we want it sitting really nicely so we want to roll out these seams here so what I want to see when I'm looking at it is just my outer fabric I don't want to be seeing the lining so I'm just rolling it out so that it's going to sit exactly like that I also don't want the outer to be rolled right in and coming into the lining if that makes sense so can you see how that's all sitting really nicely and then we'll press that I'll just make sure it's sitting nicely inside you could use your point turner if you wanted to okay but the most important bit is this top bit just press that I'll just turn it over and check that side and I'm happy with that too so I'll press that and then it has gone a little bit wrinkly with all the turning it inside out and right sides out and what have you so I'll just give it a once over And there we go so now what we're going to do is just do a top stitch along this edge it's just decorative and I think it just makes it look a little bit nicer now we're just doing a top stitch around the entire edge and I'm actually going to be doing that with a quarter inch seam allowance now again if you've got your free arm use that that will be much easier now when we sewed it together the first time I had it like this and I sewed around it because it was a little bit tricky with all the clips but now I'm doing the top stitch I want the top stitches to be the top stitches 
So I'm actually going to push it down and just be really careful and go slowly as I sew because I don't want to be sewing and then accidentally catch this bottom bit and sew it into it because then I'll end up in a right royal pickle. So I'm going to start on that seam there. I'm going to make sure nothing is underneath and I can feel that it's just a single layer and that's what I'll do. As I'm sewing around, I'm just going to feel that I'm only sewing through this one layer. I'll put my foot down, begin stitching. I'm actually going to change my stitch length to three so it's nice and long. And then once again, I'm just going to make sure that the first two or three inches in front of me are nice and flat and straight. And then I can just stop and readjust, pull this around, make sure I'm not accidentally sewing it underneath. And remember, if you've got a free arm, use that. It, this step will be much easier. But as you can see, not impossible with a sewing machine that doesn't have a free arm. So now I'm coming right up to where I started, I've just got that loose thread there, I'm just going to push it out of the way. I'm going to stitch right past where I began, do a back stitch, and then cut my thread. So I'll trim that loose thread, and now let's do our snap. Now what we need to do is measure halfway in and three quarters of an inch away from the edge here. So I'm going to take my ruler and pop it on top. And it's just slightly bigger than seven inches so i'm just going to put it so i've got a little bit of room spare here and here so it's approximately in the middle find that three quarters of an inch line on my ruler and line it up with the edge and then i'm just going to find the three and a half inch mark and just do a dot right there with my washable marker we're not going to see it then what i'm going to do is make sure it's all nicely smoothed out on this top layer and on the bottom layer and then i'm going to get my awl and I'm actually going to puncture a hole through the whole lot. So I'm just going to be really careful that my fingers aren't in the way when I'm holding it. I want to make sure that I'm going to go through and I'm not going to hit a finger. And I'm just going to push that through. And I'm going to go all the way through. I want a nice big hole so that then I can get my snaps through. So with the snaps, I've got two of the top pieces and then a male and a female. I'm going to take a top piece and pop it in through the top and then I'm going to come underneath here and push it right in and make sure that all that fabric is pushed down. That worked really well. Sometimes it's a little bit harder and you've really got to make sure it's sitting really nicely down and in there. Then I'm going to take a male or a female, it doesn't matter which one, take my pliers and attach it. So I'm just going to press down and you feel like you hear a click, but you don't because it's plastic. It just sort of mushes the plastic in. Then I'm going to come over to the other side, get the other cap, and pop that in on the back there, or the front, whichever way you've got it. And again, I'm going to push it right in so it's nice and flat. And then I'm going to get my other piece. It's either the male or the female this time. I'm not sure which one, but they were the opposites. And then again, press that on. Being nice and firm. And now we've got our snap. Isn't that cute? So there we have our book sleeve. A neat little gift would be to buy the book and pop it in the sleeve and gift that to your friend or family member that's a book lover. If you've liked this tutorial, please do hit the like button. It really helps me out. And if you're looking for something else to throw in with this gift, how about a bookmark? I'll put the link above for my tutorial for my corner bookmark. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next video.